$2.49 a month. Get the Chevy Volt for $2.49 a month. And ask about our 0% financing and all remaining 2014 Chevys. Muchísimas gracias. Live from the CBS Broadcast Center in Los Angeles, this is CBS 2 News at 5 p.m. Coverage you can count on. Welcome back to CBS 2 News at 5. I'm Ken Shockney. And I'm Pat Harvey. A man who was seriously injured by a lightning strike in Venice Beach is talking about his brush with death. Dr. Robert Kilroy, along with the first responders and doctors who treated him, spoke to reporters this afternoon. CBS 2's Lori Perez explains. The weather here on Venice Beach July 27th was much like today, hot and sunny, but then... My vision went white. The lightning came fast and furious. Seconds later, matched by the swift action of the L.A. County lifeguards who went running and then waves of fire department crews. Seen in this cell phone video, they descended on the beach. Mass casualty response for 13 people hurt in the sudden storm, including Dr. Robert Kilroy, who was struck by lightning while surfing with 15-year-old Emily, his daughter, and also now his hero. Saw me floating, and regardless of everything that happened in that moment, turned around and charged right up back into the water, grabbing me. It's just the most meaningful thing that's ever really happened in my life. Kilroy's heart had stopped, and he wasn't breathing. Today, as they met with the doctors, lifeguards, and nurses who cared for him, they focused on what happened next as emergency responders performed life saving measures, starting on the beach with the most basic of all CPR. And then to feel for a pulse and to feel a pulse was so amazing. Though the chances of your getting struck by lightning this year are close to one in a million, your chances of surviving and minimizing those injuries goes way up if someone around you has the kind of basic training that saved Dr. Kilroy's life. And why the experts are urging you to get trained. Really underscores the need for everyone to learn CPR. Learn how to use a defibrillator because you never know. In Venice Beach, Lori Perez, CBS 2 News. Civil rights leaders and parents say they don't want to see assault rifles in Compton schools. They want the school board to rescind its policy to have armed campus police officers carrying AR-15s. This evening, CBS 2's Dave Lopez looks at the controversy. Our kids are not criminals. We already have that stigma of Compton, and doing this would even make it worse. It's excessive. They were not informed and they are Paul. Uh, we don't need that much protection. It is a decision that has stirred up controversy in Compton. The Compton Unified School Board voted to authorize the school police to have AR-15 rifles, the type that is pictured here as part of their arsenal, to carry in their patrol cars. They haven't only. had no serious activities going on in the school, like no gangs or nothing going on. Everything's been going fine for a couple of for years now. I haven't seen any incidents in Compton where this is justified. It hasn't happened yet, but the board's authorization gives the school chief the right to purchase 50 rifles, one for each member of his staff, have proper training for those officers, and then have those rifles in the trunk of the car. Several other local school districts already have this policy in place including LA Unified. In a statement, LAUSD told us their police officers have access to what they call patrol rifles. We don't think it should be done in Compton, and we don't want it done in Compton. We attempted to reach the school superintendent, any of the school board members, or the police chief, and we were told by a district spokesperson, quote, nobody in this district is talking about this subject. All we got was a written statement from the school's police chief. Chief William Wu writes in part, quote, these rifles give us greater flexibility in dealing with a person with bad intent who comes onto any of our campuses. They say it's, it's, it's for protection. Protection, they don't need that for protection. What do they need rifles for? I don't think so. I think protection can come out of hand. Am I gonna find anybody who thinks it's a good idea? Uh, no, that's you it, might, it, but it, I hope not. Know. Even a school board member has had a change of heart. May Thomas issued this statement, quote, I believe that we as a body should rescind our decision to implement the policy of using the high-powered weapon in Compton Unified School District until we have received the sentiments of the community at large. The next school board meeting, September 9th. From Compton, Dave Lopez, CBS 2 News. This evening, a dire new Ebola outbreak warning. The deadly epidemic is expected to infect up to 20,000 people. That figure of 20,000 is six times the number of current cases. World health officials made the outbreak's dire forecast today. They say the number of infected people right now might be actually two to four times higher than reported because the virus is transmitting so quickly. The U.N. has announced it will spend nearly half a billion dollars to stop Ebola in West Africa. It hopes to end the outbreak within nine months.
There is need for urgent action. The world has never seen an outbreak of Ebola like this. A British drug maker now is fast-tracking an experimental vaccine. Also today, U.S. health officials announced they will begin testing the first human experimental Ebola vaccine next month. Well, if you haven't already noticed, you're paying a lot more for beef. Blame it on the drought. It's not just drying out pastures, it's sopping up cash from our wallets. CBS 2's Bagatch Band shows us how restaurants here in L.A. and around the country are dealing with the problem. The cost of doing business has never been higher for Chef Ezra Ochoa. His Los Angeles restaurant, Mexicali Taco & Company, is now paying about $1,000 more a month for its beef supply compared to just two months ago. And that's like a huge hit on us because we focus on meat. Everything we serve is pretty much beef. And uh, so we're just trying to figure things out. He's already increased his menu prices up to 5%. On average, beef now costs $5.56 a pound at grocery stores. That's a 47% increase from 2009. So you're now trying to push more non-beef dishes? Yes, we're uh, trying to push maybe more seafood, so it's kind of easier to keep our, our prices somewhat low. Restaurants across the country are also feeling the pinch. Chipotle raised prices on its beef entrees by 8%, while the Texas Roadhouse chain increased prices on all its menu items by about a percentage and a half. Agriculture professor Sean Hyatt says the drought is mainly to blame for the rising cost of beef. In Texas and Oklahoma, where most of the, the beef in the United States is raised, um, they need grass and the drought in Texas is really hurting this. U.S. cattle supplies are now at the lowest level since 1951, and less beef means higher prices. Ochoa hopes to launch his new menu items next month, since beef prices are expected to rise for at least another year. Bigad Shabam, CBS 2 News. A woman in a wheelchair stranded for hours at the airport. A skycap offered to push the 85-year-old to the gate, but she never made her flight. But the airline is blaming for the error. Also coming up, it's no joke, tripping seniors. It's in the name of research and how this research could help prevent future falls. CBS 2 News is sponsored by Ashley Furniture Home Store, the number one name in furniture. Ashley Furniture Home Store's Labor Day event. Get 25% off plus 24 months, no interest, no down payment, no minimum purchase. Or get 20% off plus 36 months, no interest, no down payment, no minimum purchase. Or get 15% off plus 48 months, no interest, no down payment, no minimum purchase. Or get 10% off plus 60 months, no interest, no down payment, no minimum purchase. Plus, don't miss our hot special. It's the Labor Day event at Ashley Furniture Home Store. Visit any of our 18 locations. It's the model year end. And we're unleashing bonus cash on the 2014 Nissan. Bottom line, Nissan's got the most exciting lineup on the road. During Nissan's bottom line, get up to 1,000 holiday bonus cash on top of existing offers on select Nissans. Innovation that excites. Shop ChooseNissan.com. Watching everybody eating what they want all day. Oh, this tasteless cardboard brings me nothing but more shame. Turning every time till I find something right. And it takes my breath. This is Ed Asner with a public notice for Southern California Edison customers. Do you own your home? Is your monthly electric bill over $150? For a limited time, you can apply for government rebates to install solar panels on your roof for zero money down. This opportunity is only available for Southern California Edison homeowners with monthly electric bills over $150. To apply for zero down solar before the deadline, call Varengo Solar at 800-457-3200. With over 10 acres of Toyotas, here at Carson Toyota, we have something for everyone. This Labor Day weekend, we're having our biggest sales event of the year. Now get a new 2014 Toyota Camry LE for just $18,288. See us for a test drive today. We're just off the 405 at the Wilmington exit. Don't miss the big Labor Day savings. Carson Toyota. It all ends Monday night. 
CBS 2 News is sponsored by Carson Toyota. Over 10 acres of Toyotas just off the 405. Well, it just sounds so wrong, but there's a reason behind it. Tripping the elderly on purpose. So you weren't kidding about that? No, okay. it's the real deal. <laughs> and a way to more accurately identify breast cancer, CBS 2's Lisa Siegel is here now with today's Health Watch. What's yeah. this about tripping seniors? I know, I know. There is a purpose. Kent is exactly right. Hi, you guys. Hi, everyone. Well, some experts want a new system to classify breast cancers. They want to break down the disease into 10 different categories. In Britain, they looked at more than 8,500 tumor samples to come up with the classifications. They say it could lead to more effective and better targeted treatments. Well, would you pay more for your soda? Some say it could cut down on childhood obesity. The idea is a tax on soda and other sugary drinks, a penny more per ounce. Research out of Washington, D.C. says the tax makes people think about what they're drinking. Plus, it would raise billions for obesity prevention programs. All right, here's what we were talking about. No one likes to fall, but for the elderly, it is a big concern. Now, a new idea in the lab may lead to fewer falls in the future. It's no accident researchers are tripping this 81-year-old woman on purpose, but Mary Kay is taking it in stride. She's learned how not to fall after too many close encounters with crumbling sidewalks. I fall forward and I land on my face and it's usually quite disastrous for my face. Falls are a leading cause of injury among the elderly, cost 30 billion a year to treat and can spiral seniors into poor health and disability. So researchers are teaching older adults how to catch themselves in normal life by tripping them in the lab. They're outfitted in safety gear and motion sensors. In an initial study with a special walkway, participants reduce their chance of falling by 50% up to a year later. This is all implicit learning. We don't give any instruction. They don't have to be motivated. Uh, they naturally are being motivated because they don't want to be on the floor. Professor Clive Pye says this technique stimulates the subconscious and works much faster than traditional fall prevention methods like physical therapy and even exercise. This is really a new paradigm for fall prevention. Pye will up the ante in his next study, subjecting volunteers to a treadmill that will periodically skip. With further study, he hopes the devices can help people with neurological conditions like MS and stroke that all increase the risk of a fall. You are helpless when, you, when you're out, out of balance and you cannot you know, catch yourself to, to, to get back up. Jim Chin is a stroke patient who had three falls in as many months. He wants to regain a better sense of control, just like Kay did. You learn. Every time you fall, you learn. Wow. Well, the approach may seem unconventional. It may prevent some serious tumbles in the future. That is the hope. So while it looks uncomfortable, you can tell she's having a good time and she's really trying. So it was fun to watch the smiles of all yeah. of the participants. Yes, they are smiling. So and it is really to move things forward. Yeah. All right. Well, all right. right around the corner. <laughs> Thank you. Not Lisa.